eventually it got to the point where I did some soul searching and I, I met someone a few years older than me who had been in the same position I was. And he basically suggested to focus on one subject, focus on one topic, one textbook, and finish every single que question in that textbook and see how you go. If you get anything below 60%, then maybe you need to call it a day and go get a job. If you get anything above, say exactly where you are. And that's exactly what I did. So maths mechanics, 200 page textbook, about 2,000 questions. I did every single question in that textbook. I didn't leave any stone uncovered. And I did a pass paper. Any ideas what I got? Just a rough, any guesses? 60%. Any other guesses? <clears throat> 80 percent 93%. Surprise, surprise. They all know they can do it. They all know they can do it inside. Just need that belief system to change that. So with after everything after that point was kind of incidental, I started developing several strategies for my exa for my exams and different subjects. I retook all of my subjects in one year. Um, did pretty much two years of work in one, in one. Retook my exams at the end of the year. Ended up getting straight A's across the board. Many module marks were above 90%. Then I used the same principles at university, at UCL, and I achieved one of the highest degree scores in the faculty, um, along with three other students. Then I used these qualifications to get multiple internships and graduate jobs at various investment banks and asset managers. None of this would have, wouldn't have happened, would have happened if I didn't have that mindset shift during a levels And this, over the past few years, I've been trying to help other students experience that mindset shift as well, by recreating the conditions that I went through. That's part of what we've been doing at Heathrow. <coughs> now, I want to talk a little bit more about the program that we've done here at Heathfield and also talk about how, um, what you guys can do as parents over the next 16 to 18 months to help them improve. And just to add, I used a lot of these, I used a lot of the tactics and strategies and things that I've learned to create several study guides, which are number, number one bestsellers. Over 50,000 people have read my study guides over the past two and a half years. I've done various talks, like a TEDx talk, and talks at the London School of Economics and also introduce private coaching and mentorship, which is what we're going to talk about later after this session. So there are three cogs in the machine, three pieces of the puzzle when it comes to achieving good grades. Study technique, study cycle, and beliefs. With study technique, this is what we've been running through with, with your daughters. What to learn, how to learn, and when to learn. <coughs> When it comes to you guys, the only thing you need to be concerned about is when to learn. So I spoke to, I was mentoring a, a girl called Sara um, last year. Her mum approached me and bought my mentorship package, kind of as a last resort. Her daughter was not interested in school at all. She lost belief in herself, but her mum always thought that she was capable. Um, now, Sara did not want to speak to me at all. So I would, whenever I called her, she wouldn't even say hello, she was kind of grunt. And um, but over time she came around and we created a study plan for her. We calculated how many pages she needed to cover for each of her exams and the subjects. And we tallied, tallied them up and found that it came to about just over 2,300 pages that she needed to cover. So I said, okay, go, go off and start. A few weeks later, Caught up, caught up with her, called her and said, how are you getting along? And she said, I haven't done anything. I said, why? She goes, because I'm not going to revise now because I'll forget everything before the exam anyway. Who used to have this belief at school, just to see a show of hands, out of curiosity? Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Sorry. Hi. Probably the most damaging assumption any student can have um, when it comes to academia. And when I asked the girls on Tuesday um, when, who believes in this, a lot of them put their hands up. And I don't blame them, to be honest. Like if I took a 
I took a textbook from one of their books and asked you all to read it now and learn it, and then test you on it in a month's time. How much would you really remember? Maybe 10, 20 percent, if you're lucky. So I don't blame them at all. And this is this is the logic behind cramming. And a lot of students resort to cramming because of this belief. And you can get away with cramming with GCC because there's less content for some subjects, but for A level. There is no hope. There's just too much to cover and too little time. Where's the bubble there? Please right. So my solution to this is spacing the revision out over several months and doing a little bit each day. I call this layered learning. Let's say, for example, that textbook page. If we learn, if we, all of us read it right now, We'll probably, within, within a couple of seconds, we would know about 100% of that information. After a couple of seconds and minutes after you close the book, your brain starts pruning that information. It starts becoming lost, but not deleted. So a lot of students are now walking into the exam here, having only 40% of the information they have. But if you keep repeating that again and again, you start forgetting the information slower, at a slower rate. And the entire philosophy around layered learning is based around this. So for example, with Sarah, we hit the refresh button July 1st. So she had 2,303 pages to cover between July 1st and March 31st. Then she started layer two between April and May. So it's two days before, two months before her exams. And she covered it all. Now between this time, she would have actually learned the information a total of six times. So when you think about it, she's receiving the information from a teacher's voice into her ear, the homework that a teacher has set, and four times using her, my own study techniques that she learned. So at the end of this, I sat, I, I went to Sarah's house, we, me, her mum, we stood in her study area, she had four piles, four learning packs in front of her, one for each subject and this printed on the wall. Total pages, total pages cover 2,303. Deadline 31st of March. Target eight pages a day. <coughs> and I asked her, how do you feel? And she burst into tears and just said, relieved, relieved. And this is one of my favorite parts of this career, this job. When a student knows what they're doing, it's extremely liberating. And I pretty much always get this reaction. And um, I'm, I'm currently mentoring Peter's son, Pierce, right now. I got a very similar reaction from him too when that happened. So now our work wasn't over. Um, we hit the refresh button. Sarah carried on working. She went one or two days doing eight pages a day, but then fell off the wagon again. So it's never it's never fully done. So this this is when I started working with her mum a little bit more on her study cycle, which is the second part. Now, there's several things parents can do at home that can help a child's study cycle. First, let me explain what a study cycle is. So the study cycle has three <coughs> stages. Intent, action, and maintenance. So intent is how often you think about doing work, the desire to do work. Action is when you turn that thought into something tangible, that you sit down and start effectively working. And maintenance is how long you can effectively study for before you need to take a break, and then the cycle continues again. So now we all know intent is the easy part. You can think about studying all day, you can think about going on the treadmill all day, but actually getting up and doing it is the hard part. Taking action is a difficult part. I always tell parents to focus on this part. Try and get your, your child to do, make action, continuously make action every single day. After five minutes of taking action, when you're in, you build some momentum. You carry on going, the longer this period, the better, until you need to take a break again and the cycle continues. Now, the certain things that you guys can do and say to your, to your daughters to help with this cycle. So, these are a few phrases that I've caught from parents that seem to work. Simply asking, what's your page count today? Why don't you sit at your desk and see what happens? It's a very low pressure, no pressure way of getting them to sit down and start working. <coughs> Why don't you finish three more pages and then you can do X, Y, Z? Do you want me to hold your phone for an hour? That is the most important one. Yeah. We were speaking about this yesterday, and 
they've just designed these too well, right? What's the highest grossing game in casinos? Does anyone know? The most popular games in casinos? Slot machine. <coughs> slot machine makes, the slot machine makes the most amount of money for casinos, and you can understand why. It's, winning is always seems elusive, but not too elusive. So you end up putting the coin in the machine, putting it down, and you're wondering, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? Let's have a look at this. <coughs> People who built these platforms have taken inspiration from this type of, type of addiction. You pull down, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? What am I going to get? And something pops up. They've made them far too well. And keeping them around the study area is difficult. Isn't they're making it too hard for themselves. I think, I estimate, if you remove phones from the study area completely, it could probably improve grades by about 3 to 5%. That's just a roundabout estimate of what it works. See. So what can you do to help the study cycle? Portable learning packs. So if, we do, if you do decide to enroll on the mentorship program, we'll be creating learning packs for each of your daughters. We've got to make sure that they're portable, that we can move them around. There's so many random times in the summer, etc., where you're sitting in a waiting room or doing just dead time, where you can get a few pages done in between these areas. A minimized study area. The best study area should have nothing on it, literally. No, no, no family photos, no pictures on the wall, nothing. Just a pen, a pad, and the learning packs. And that works best. Zero external distractions. A basic, that gets we all no heavy meals. It's so hard to concentrate after you've had a heavy meal. So with Sara, I worked with I would work with a mum for the first two, three weeks of some of the summer holidays. And to be honest with you, the first two weeks was a fight. It was an absolute fight. There were a lot of tears in their house, there was, there was a lot of um, anxiety, a lot of arguments. Um, I didn't even speak to her for the first three or four days. And as I started speaking to her more and more, we used this kind of, in a very crude way, carrot and stick approach to get her to finish 10 pages a day. <coughs> By two weeks, it was a little bit uphill, but not too bad. By three weeks, the habit was formed completely. A month and a half later, she finished a class paper, got 70 odd percent, her belief systems have changed. Um. So now, a lot of people ask me, what, when, I, when they ask me what I do, and I used to say, oh, I help students improve their grades, but my true job description is actually, I, I'm, I'm in the business of changing belief systems. Okay? And when I think about the time when, when my beliefs changed during A-levels at various times, they always had, there were always one or two individuals that had an influence on me. They had some, something to do with that change. Do you remember when I mentioned that individual in the beginning who told me to do the whole textbook? He, <clears throat> that was one piece of advice out of hundreds he gave me over a, a long period of time, over six to 12 months. And without that advice, I don't think I would have been able to do what I did. So that's, that basically formed the basis of, of our mentorship scheme. I'm, I aim to do the exact same thing he did to me and that I've done to many others with your daughters and change their belief system. So just to give you an example of how the interactions work. This is another ment a mentee that I'm mentoring right now. He's doing physics, maths, and computer science. He, he's in the year of us, who came to me at around November time. Um, very anxious kid, he didn't know what to do. He did really badly in his previous, in his previous <coughs> year. We counted that he had around 2,000 odd pages to finish. And he had about four or five months to do it. So we needed to complete 17 to 18 pages a day. It's quite difficult. So we started off fairly slow. He went days and days without even talking, or even uh, saying anything to me, or even getting any words done. And over time, we came around. So what I do, I use something called inspired nagging. <laughs> Where I know, I know every mentee's schedule. I know when they're getting on the bus. I know what they're doing every day. So with him, I knew that every time he came home, he just started watching TV. That was his routine. So I used to send him a message at the exact time he would get on the bus. I'd say, how about you do two or three pages now? 
And then when you get home, just focus on those three pages, get them done, and you're done for the day. And I'll do many, many things like that over time. So this is an example of some of our interactions. So we'll just take a moment to read that WhatsApp. So we managed to get into about eight to ten, sometimes sometimes like 13 pages on that day in January. Down up from zero, it's not bad. This is a current snapshot of what he's achieved so far. He's finished 1,119 pages. He's got a total of about 1,200 pages to go. He's got about six weeks to do that. So he's got a difficult task ahead of him. This is another reason why it's so important to start early. Um, and this is where he is now. We barely even speak to each other now. This is the only, our only interaction. He's just sending me 20 pages a day done, 25 pages done. I'm keeping track of that thing. He falls off the wagon, I'm on the phone with him saying, what's going on, what's going on? He actually tells me things that he doesn't tell his parents, like personal issues and things that I can help him through. And that's kind of the basis between, behind the mentorship program. There's, there's, there's a certain trust and friendship that's developed between each student and me. And we manage to work through problems that they don't voice to many of you guys. So just to highlight the word of mentorship. This is what, sorry, this is our WhatsApp conversation this morning, just to give you another idea. Let's just tell you about a little bit more about the mentorship program. <coughs> So now that we've done these workshops, the mentorship program will include two in-school sessions. This is where we just tally up, we make sure the girls' learning packs are okay. And then there'll be multiple remote coaching sessions, just like how you saw with the previous mentee, um, where we'll have several Skype, phone, and WhatsApp conversations, where I just keep them on track. When I was speaking to my wife today about this, um, she gave the example of how, 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 how it was very similar to dieting. My wife always tells me to basically keep chocolate away from her. So she would, she would have a couple of bites, give it to me and say, don't give it to me. And then five, ten minutes later, she'll come back to me and say, can I have it? And I'll say, obviously say no. And then she'll get angry at me by doing that. And but when her PT is messaging her and saying no to her and saying doing this, she does it. There's something about having to be accountable to someone outside of your family which just works. And that's why I think this mentorship program has proved to be so useful. Thanks everyone for listening. Sorry, just coming back to your pages and everything else in the in terms of getting into do you put yardsticks down for an actual absorption of that information? Or do you just rely on the school for the exam? The yardstick in terms of how they're doing when they're taking twenty pages a day away from the learning. What justification do you switch off and say you've done the piece? What's the so <coughs> <laughs> they could be easily glazing over the pages and not doing yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. So there is a certain element of trust here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can tell from the way they speak to me and the way they're talking about it and their whole demeanour, whether they're actually doing it or not. And it also comes down to you guys as well, to even check if they're doing it. Just keep an eye on them if they're actually learning it properly. Right, thank you. So by, when you say learning, do you mean memorising? Or, I mean, I know subjects vary, but I mean, Certain subjects, you just have to get it in your head. Is that what you actually mean that you would learn? And you know, <coughs> they wouldn't learn it word for word. But I mean, how, yeah, you know, can you just yeah, so with the, I, I've told the girls there are three different styles of learning: fact recall, method of understanding, yeah. and written prose. So fact recall stuff is like biology, yeah. where you literally just need to get that into your head yeah. and you need to learn it. Lots of lots of information. Method of understanding is like maths where you need to practice again and again. And your grade is correlated by the number of questions you do. Written prose is essay writing, written prose, etc. <clears throat> so some subjects require a combination of these learning styles, like uh, history requires written prose and fact recall. Yeah. So I've given a study technique to each, each of them. Right. Tell you. Um, I, 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 oh, sorry, please. 
Uh, how do you, I mean, obviously you can't look after hundreds of people because we haven't got the time, obviously, in the day. To, so how do you find the time in the day to look after a certain amount of people and then do you draw a line? Are you just helping Heathfield? Are you actually, um, obviously, you may be involved with Harrow or whatever. I mean, how does that work with your time if it's just yourself? Yeah, so we, we do have a limit on, in terms of, we have a system in place as well to manage that time. So, for example, with, with WhatsApp conversations, we have a system on the line to manage everything. We've got these tracking sheets uh, that we use for the time to track them. And also, there is usually enough time in my year, in the next 18, 16 months or so, to manage about 70 students. That's kind of my limit. And he feels it's part of that 70. I just thought I'd mention, obviously, I'm a, I'm a user, so to speak, in the sense that Pierce um, uh, and, of course, boys are a lot less diligent, in my experience, at least in our family than girls are. So Scarlett actually does try and study. Uh, Pierce is, really just wants to spend his time out in the rugby pitch or playing golf or anything other than study. But he particularly suffered from, uh, for starters, a lack of belief himself that he was actually clever. He decided that everybody else was clever and he was only middle of the road. So actually, it, it, he, he nearly didn't want to start at all. That, by the way, he did well in this exam. He got into Harrow, so he's obviously not stupid at all. But he didn't think he was a three A's or A stars type of student. So the biggest issue, and we're still fighting with that, is the, is the belief aspect to him. But that comes from starting to see the results change. <coughs> in terms of being able to uh, see whether or not this is having any effect at all, I mean, we're a few, what, three or four months into it now, but I have to say, at school, uh, the way he's carrying himself is different, so he's actually clearly doing it. I mean, there's a bit of spoofing going on, yeah. surely, you know, he's a teenager, of course he is. But, you know, the teachers are starting to feed back on. We're noticing his, his behaviour in class is a bit, bit more, he's putting his hand up because he actually has read the stuff and his performance in the assessments going along the way. Now, he hasn't done the end of year exams yet, so <coughs> we'll see what happens. But, so it's, it's a bit early for me to be giving you sort of demonstrative, you know. It just made sense to me that we all focus on uh, what we're studying, but nobody actually ever takes time, because I know from my own study way back a few years ago, uh, that nobody ever talks about how to study. And, and, and to some kids it comes naturally because they're very diligent and they work hard, they kind of stumble into the process. But for most other kids, it's just a big, huge lump of work, and they sort of nearly don't start. So the, the, the thing I love the most about this was <coughs> break it down into digestible bits, and then they can kind of cope with that. I mean, it probably works for all of us, frankly. So I would say, yeah, we're, I suppose, beginning to in this context. It's actually working, but, you know, I haven't done the exam results yet, but please go.